Welcome to Monobiology. Today we're going to talk about the concept of microevolution. And you can fill in the information in your booklet as we go through. So, microevolution, what is it? By definition, microevolution is a change in the gene pool of a population. It's a change in the relative frequencies of alleles in the population over time. And it's evolution on the smallest scale. So those are the kind of concepts of microevolution. Remember, alleles are forms of a gene, and genes, of course, lead to traits. And so basically we're looking at how populations' traits can change over a period of time. Okay, so in this, in this uh, concept of microevolution, there are basically six, sorry, five causes. And those causes are genetic drift, gene flow, mutations, non-random mating, and natural selection. And we already talked quite a bit about natural selection, so I'm going to focus on the other four concepts as we go through. So you can fill those into the boxes provided as we, as we talk about these. Okay, so under genetic drift, there are actually three different concepts. And the first one is random sampling. Okay, so genetic, genetic drift uh, is changes in the gene pool of a small population due to random chance. Okay, so the first one is random sampling, and then there's two other concepts, one called the bottleneck effect and one called the founder effect, which essentially force the random sampling. Okay, so in this concept, I want you to watch what happens to the population. Notice that there are, in the, in the bottles there, there are blue and red dots representing an, a gene in the population or an allele in the population. And watch what happens when I take a random sample. And these are my drawings, so... Okay, so random sample after basically what we have here, just to show you, this is one generation, and then this is the next generation. Took a random sample of mating, and look what happens. The number of the red alleles has decreased in the population. The gene pool has changed. Okay, the gene pool is basically all of the different uh, alleles that you have for particular traits in the population. And notice that it's changed. It used to be 50-50, now it's not anymore. Okay, so if that was to happen, and we took another random sample, and the next one, okay, again, it's changed, a shift more towards the blue again. Okay, so you see what's happening, and by the time I get all the way down to the last one, what might happen, because this was a small population to begin with, what might happen is this. I may end up with an entire population with just that one particular allele. Okay, so now, this is not going to affect large populations as much as it is small populations. Okay, but it, it, it can cause uh, a change in the gene pool. And, of course, that can drive evolution. Okay, if originally my population had variation like this, and now I don't, then this population is certainly different than this population, and that's driving what we call microevolution. Okay, all right, let's talk about the next concept, the bottleneck effect, which is part of genetic drift. Okay, so the bottleneck effect is a drastic reduction in the population generally due to a catastrophic event. Okay, so if you look here at the parent population, and you've got the parent population here, you see that the 
the blue and the yellow alleles are distributed evenly. Well, if I if I pretend that those are in a bottle and I pour those bottles into into a cup representing the catastrophic event, the ones that are poured in here uh, represent the ones who survive the catastrophic event. Okay, and notice that more blue than yellow have survived. Now, as that population grows and develops, watch what happens. Because more blue than yellow survived, completely due to random chance, by the way. This is not because the blue were stronger and more fit for their environment. This is because it was random selection. The blue ones just happened to come out of the bottle before the yellow ones. That's it. Okay, so it's random chance. We're not talking about natural selection here at all. But look what happened to the population. That yellow allele is now less likely to show up in the population. And again, that can drive evolution. A third idea that fits under genetic drift is called the founder effect. Okay, and that's a loss of genetic variety due to a small part of the population separating and forming a new colony. So imagine that you are a colonial uh, explorer and you basically are traveling around and you and your the people on your ship land on an island okay so you and the people on your ship represent this small section of the population who left the original place and traveled to a new place okay the original population the alleles were all equal. The red and the green alleles were perfect, 50-50. Okay, but as you separate this small group from the population, you can see that there's a disproportionate number of alleles in the small population. Okay, and that is how the founder effect starts. It's a loss of genetic variety due to a small part of the population separating and forming a new colony and you can see how the allele frequencies change. Okay, the next concept that we're going to talk about is gene flow. Gene flow is a change in the gene pool due to migration of fertile individuals or due to the transfer of gametes between populations. Okay, so in this situation here, what we have, we have two populations, a population of birds here and a population of birds here. Notice that one of the cheeky birds from this population has decided to come over here and mate with one of the birds from this population, and one of the cheeky birds from this population has decided to come over here and mate with one of these birds. This happens all the time in nature, all the time in nature. We're going to, uh, individuals from one population move into another population to mate. I want you to think about, uh, there's a couple of different uh, groups of animals that, that this happens all the time in. Think about, think about uh, wolves, right? You have the alphas, and then you have all the other ones. The alphas are the ones that get to mate first, and they kind of hold the other ones down. Well, the other ones might go off and find a new population. They get kicked out of that, right? And there's also meerkats. Meerkats are run in a matriarchal society, and the females often, if they're not the matriarchal female, they will leave that population and they will go off and find another population of meerkats so that they can mate, right? And so what what that what that essentially does is it creates a, a slightly different gene pool um, because of the migration of these individuals. And when I talk about the transfer of gametes between populations, what I really mean there is that if you're a plant and you release your gametes into the wind and those move from one area to another, or it can happen randomly too, like it could get stuck to a car and a car could travel from one place in Canada to another place in Canada, and those genes get transferred from one area to another and transfer through populations, which of course can drive evolution. Mutation is the third one, and that's just an introduction of a new allele due to mutations, as we've discussed before. The next one on the list after that is sexual selection. Now, sexual selection is actually kind of interesting because it's a type of selection that involves what we call non-random mating. Okay, so they're not mates are not randomly chosen. In natural selection, 
they're not really r randomly chosen either, but natural selection is a force that drives towards traits that are going to make you better suited to the environment. Sexual selection doesn't always do that. For instance, you look at this group of animals here, you see that you have a male buck and three female does. This buck has been selected because he has the biggest rack of antlers. Okay? And essentially, he's going to be the one that gets to mate with the females first. If he wins all his fights in rutting season, he will get to mate with all the females first. Therefore, his genes are more likely to be passed on. But he's got these antlers, which makes him a bigger target for hunters. So sexual selection doesn't always mean that you're going to have the better traits. Okay? But you can see that sexual selection creates a difference between the sexes. The males and the females are different. This is a female spider, male spider. This is a male pheasant, a female, male lion, female. And these animals were selected this way over generations of sexual selection. The females or the males, depending on the species, selected these organisms, and that's how they got to be the way they are. Okay, so it's not randomly chosen, and that drives or pushes microevolution. And that, in a nutshell, is how microevolution works. The last one, of course, is natural selection, and that's differential reproductive success, where some phenotypes are selected against. Okay, so that, that we've already talked about in class. I'm not going to add this to, the, to this video. But that, in a nutshell, is how microevolution works. Bring your questions to class.